thing, I mean, we really are challenged by technology on both coasts. So we have determined that I have these smart young people that we're, we're going to be recording everything and running it as a watch party tonight at six o'clock. So I'm going to be doing a, you know, uh, between then and there, I'll be able to do a real full pivot uh, and let everybody know and get, uh, and get okays from everyone. Um, we have a person in here who should not be here, which is Mr. Dr. Savan. He's already said he can leave the great room too. We'll see you at, um, yeah, there you go. See you, Dr. Selvin. All right. So our apologies. I love your enthusiasm and your spirit. <laughs> I you're, do not, you're, you're not letting this bother you at all. I love it so much. <laughs> I don't plan on letting this bother me at all, at all, at all. I love it. <laughs> so you all, you were invited to this panel because I think you are examples of the capacity of maturity. I think that you are all, all active. Uh, you are all uh, engaged in life. I think you're doing things in life and in communities that make a change. And I really want the world to see that, that age is just a number, right? And that we can be so much greater than just age. And I feel like you're all, the three of you are the best example of that. Aww. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, I am going to let you all do your own introductions of yourself, little brief introductions of yourself, um, uh, and just really tell us what you feel you want the world to know about, about life, fitness, and what you do to kind of connect those things. I'm going to start with Renita. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I so appreciate the invitation to be a part of this panel. I am Renita Alexander, the leadership locksmith. I am a uh, lifelong fitness and leadership enthusiast. Um, after I retired from the Air Force, I fulfilled my lifelong dream and became a fitness instructor. So I, uh, I am a bar method fitness instructor. Wow. And uh, but as as you know, as life is, so is is uh, as leadership leadership is, so is life as fitness. And so, you know, one mm -hmm. of the things I, I think about with fitness is, you know, when I'm uh, in front of a class and I'm teaching um, uh, people, you know, going through the, the motions, I, I can't tell whether or not you are fulfilling your potential. Only mm -hmm. you know that. And that's the same way in life. You know, I can guide you. I can say, hey, this is the things that uh, that will help you when it comes to fitness. It's the same way. These are the things that will help you be fitter, but uh, be more fit. But if you uh, if you're not doing it, I, can, I don't know whether or not you're pushing yourself to your fullest potential. Mm -hmm. And so that is kind of what I would I would uh, say with regard to fitness and life. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was perfect. That was perfect. I'm going to go clockwise on my screen and I'm going to go to Miss Adebi, Dr. Adebi Banjoko. My heart. That's my heart right there. <laughs> She's morning. what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm so proud of you, Geneva. Um, like it was mentioned that you did not let this fluster you and you just kept moving forward. I'm very happy about that. Yes, so Jennifer and I have known each other for, for quite a while. We were kind of, she was a kid, I was a little older uh, when we met. And uh, it was a dance company, Kawambe Omawali. And I always saw her as the keeper of the energy because nobody in the whole company had as much energy as she did. And so if I was feeling a little low, I'd just go stand next to her and then I'd be all energized again. Found out later it was Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> <That part. laughs> which I have incorporated into my life ever since. Mm -hmm. um, so with my fitness journey, it began when I was very young, four years old, probably in Chicago and watching Ed Sullivan and there were ballet dancers. And my mother was very aware that I really wanted to be a ballerina. So at four, she enrolled me in Sadie Bruce's dance company or school it was a company, but I went to the school um, and I started dancing at four. The other thing she introduced me to was plants, which my uh, doctorate actually is in molecular cell biology, but it's 
I studied in the botany department. So it's plant cell biology because really cells are kind of cells. Doesn't matter what organism they're in. They're going to, you know, DNA and all that's going to be the same. So these things have followed so. me through, through my life. And I have, um, I have not stopped dancing and I have not stopped growing plants um, in terms of fitness. It just kind of follows, you know, once you begin a kind of lifestyle, which I did mm -hmm. begin at four years old, it's just carried through. So right now, though I am retired, um, I really am involved with um, a couple here that have a company or a business called One Body, One Mind Fitness. Mm -hmm. It's Cheryl and Mike, and they are like the epitome. Everybody looks at them and like, okay, that's who I want to be like. So mm -hmm. they have a lot of online classes that they are doing. He's a nutritionist, so I'm learning more about eating. And I really value them because they interest Black people in their health. And, you know, unfortunately, and you know that a lot of Black people are just suffering with diabetes and all kinds of things mm -hmm. and heart stuff, high blood pressure, all of that. So by being interested in maintaining a certain kind of life, then um, I continue to participate. And yeah, so age, it's a little bit more than a number, but you don't have to let it define you. That number does not have to define you or, or your mindset. I was just talking to my wife and we decided, oh yeah, it's like the um, 50th anniversary of our 23rd <laughs> birthday, but you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It really doesn't matter as long as you uh, continue to consider yourself. And the main thing is you're always enough. You are enough mm. to do whatever it is you need to do and to not be, uh, you know, intimidated by things. So that's kind of where I am. Wonderful. Thank you so very much. And to the gentleman in the uh -huh. Mr. Allen Burgess. Yeah, it, this is... Um... This is beautiful company. I am, <laughs> and I am grateful. Um, let me give you the short version. Um, you know, anticipating being here, I thought about it in a way that I kind of think about it when I wake up every day. Like, what? How can I contribute? Like, how can I be of service here? And um, you know, I'm an I'm an educator. I work for the Santa Monica Malibu School District uh, in a program called the Positive Behavior uh, Program. I am an artist. Um, one of my most recent projects was a designing exhibit on the Harlem Renaissance. And I am an activist. That, that's what I do. Um, and finally in my life, what I do and who I am are, are becoming the same thing. So I'm grateful for that. Um, fitness. Like I look, I've been thinking about it all week in anticipation of this and fitness isn't, um, I, I don't have a particular area of expertise. I've been a high level athlete all, most of my life, college football scholarship, uh, semi-professional basketball, 40 year tennis player. Fitness has become not a thing uh, that's a, uh, a, an activity in my life. It's part of my lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a Chinese curse, may you have an interesting life. I have had an interesting life. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a curse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, be careful. Interesting can mean a lot of things. Oh, but yeah. in anyway, in, in getting my life to the place that I wanted to be, um, I became real aware that my mind, my body, and my soul were connected. And in order for me to literally survive, I had to get that and I had to develop a physical routine that enhanced my life. And that's what mm -hmm. I've, I've done. So I can't give anyone uh, all the nuts and bolts and physical aspects of a particular fitness regimen, but I can tell you for days why you might need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I hear you. I hear so that, that's kind of my story so what i have to offer is my experience um mm -hmm. you know i kind of equate it to like a diet somebody people don't need diets they need lifestyle change <clears throat> yeah exactly, <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> and, and exactly. that's my and that's my story that's your story thank you so much and, and a and really really intriguing story too uh so many i find so many um men in particular uh, come to fitness through sports. And so it was, it was very important that you shared that that's, it's the experience of sports that, that brought you there. 
Mm-hmm. And I truly appreciate all of you uh, sharing that. So I'd like us, as we move forward, to have a pretty much a, um, a discussion, like, you know, a dialogue is the word I'm looking for. I'm going to throw out questions. I want you guys to talk to each other, talk over each other, talk with each other, <laughs> and uh, I'll let it play out and I'll just guide it. And um, I'll start by asking maybe one person, but feel free to, to, you know, and if I feel that I want to get something from someone else, I will definitely say, hey, so what do you think about that? Based on what I've learned from what you all uh, experiences, your life narratives are when it comes to this particular topic. How's that sound? Sound okay? Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So we're looking at uh, fitness and aging, right? And we do know bodies age. I mean, just, it's just the whole thing with, with gravity and all those things. So I'm going to start with Dr. Van Joko, um, just because I, you, you mentioned cells. How does age affect the ability to build muscle mass? Well, <laughs> Specifically, I don't know the biology of that, but I do know that (laughs) as you age, it does become more difficult to maintain your muscle mass and to build your muscle mass. In Mm -hmm. fact, this was a question I was going to ask Ernestine because I'm (laughs) interested in knowing the answer to that same question. (laughs) Yeah. Now, in terms of our mitochondria, which are the little uh, organelles that take our food and break it down and give us energy, they begin to wear out, become leaky, aren't quite as efficient, which is where our nutrition mm. is very important that we are feeding our body what they need to perform optimally. Um, and again, I'm really not, I don't have the answer to that question. I do know that age does affect our ability to build muscle mass. But yes, this was the question mm-hmm. I was going to ask Ernestine. <laughs> <laughs> Because obviously yeah. she's got the key to what that's all about. That. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I just so, I, can I just jump yeah, in? Please, yeah, please, yeah. please. And, yes. and, and I, I'm with you. I don't know the specific science, but I have seen women, um, because that's primarily who I work with, gain muscle as you know, even even if they started when they were older. And there mm-hmm. was the example, uh, Ernestine, of course, is one that we follow. There was another example of um, that was um, was out recently of a woman who started in her like 60s. So Ernestine started, I think she was in her 40s when she's uh, 50s when she started. 58, with, I think it was. Yeah, so this mm-hmm. was a woman that started in her 60s and actually built muscle. And so it's not it's not, it's, it may be harder to do. And I, and I certainly know from my own experience, having had a couple of surgeries over the last couple of years where I wasn't able to lift and do the resistance training as much that I lost some muscle mass, but I have been able to regain it. And so even though it may be harder as we get older, it's not impossible. Right. Okay. And I'm going to come back to that resistance training piece in a minute. Okay. (laughs) Alan, uh, regarding... Uh, this whole thing with with muscle mass, particularly men, you Mm -hmm. know, um, uh, what do you find or what do you know about muscle mass in men as they age? You know what, uh, you know, I I know what I observe and I have certain theories, but the the one uh, area of muscle mass that I'm an expert on is mine. (laughs) 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 I think wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. (laughs) And and I just turned... uh, uh, just last month, I just turned 67, and mm. I play two hours of tennis, probably five days a week. Mm. And uh, and I am noticing the, I don't even want to use the word deterioration, um, but I'm noticing my physical aging. And I'm noticing that um, I am still able to do things that I could do 20 years ago but the toll is much higher, <laughs> you know, there's things that I can still do, but I can no longer do them effortlessly, mm. you know? So what mm-hmm. I've had to do is, um, is pick my battles in terms of, of, of how hard I work my body. You know, I've gotten wiser. If I'm on the court and I'm playing, and normally might play five sets of tennis, it'd be mm-hmm. like, you know, you don't have to play five sets of tennis. <laughs> you right. can play three. <laughs> you, know I mean? you can play three. <laughs> go home and eat a good meal and rest and let mm-hmm. your body heal. So that's the biggest thing I'm noticing. I'm noticing that um, okay. not so much a deterioration in my abilities, but a, certainly a deterioration in my recovery 
from those activities. Ah, yes. So, okay. so I've mm -hmm. had to be wiser and and more miserly and more more um, and smarter in in the energy and the exercise that I expend. You okay. know. Yeah, great, great. Thank you all so much. I'm going to go on to another question. I'm going to uh, roll back on the resistance training. Um, so I'm going to, Benita, uh, you actually posed this question when I asked you all to suggest some, some topics uh, mm -hmm. regarding um, re resistance training. Could you help us understand what resistance training is and, and, and definitely how it benefits women? Uh, absolutely. So it can be, you know, anything where you are using a uh, weight, it can be your body weight, right? Mm -hmm. It can be bands, it can be actually lifting weights or machines. So anything that you are, you are, you, are, uh, you know, pushing against something, right? To mm -hmm. engage muscles. And so uh, what I found is that a lot of women in particular are afraid of that kind of training because they think they're going to bulk up. But, you know, we are not made to do that. We're not going to get if you see women that are very bulky, they want to be that way, right? So, you know, the bodybuilders, they want to be that way. And I'm not knocking that in any way, but what I'm saying is, you know, if you don't want to be, you know, big like that, you don't have to. We're just not genetically mm -hmm. built to be that way, but you can, you can and, and should uh, incorporate some kind of resistance into your fitness training because that's what kind of gives our bodies shape, right? So the muscle is what kind of gives us, um, you know, uh, our bodies get, you know, that's how we maintain the shape is the muscle. So the arms, the legs, you know, the, the butt, the gluteus maximus, mm -hmm. all of that. That's what gives it some shape is just having the muscle there. So I always encourage women to, um, to do some kind of resistance training. Again, it doesn't have to be with weights, it can be with bands or even with just your own body, you know, just, you know, doing things where you are, you know, lifting your own body weight. But, uh, but yeah, when you incorporate that, that's going to help you maintain your shape over, over the years. Right. Thank you. Very good. Anybody else want to weigh in on the whole idea of, of, of resistance training? You well, know? first of all, I just need to tell Renita, you've got the most beautiful skin through this computer screen. You know, <laughs> it's just, you I know? can't stop staring at you because I'm like <laughs> looking at this, I'm like, okay, I want to do what she's doing. Um, water, <laughs> lots of water, lots of water. <laughs> lots of water. I, I know that's true. Um, <laughs> so right now I'm once again, recovering from a surgery. I had a total shoulder replacement this time. So Ooh. I'm going to be bionic. I, my philosophy is replace everything that needs to be replaced. So I can keep on going. You know, they can replace it all. <laughs> it's fine. <with> me. <laughs> um, the recovery is not so much fun. Um, and it, so with the shoulder, first of all, I didn't realize you were going to get so weak so fast. Um, it really is amazing. I, I had the surgery in October. And the, uh, my physical therapist says I'm doing great, which I'm sure I am. Um, and I was telling her about this panel today, but I do know that my recovery involves bands, as you mentioned. Um, now I've graduated to the machines. Um, and of course, then there are the calisthenics that you do just using your own body. And I think it's really important um, that women do know that it is important to maintain and build muscle mass. Um, Geneva knows I have a daughter who is a figure competitor mm -hmm. and I watch her body you know, change into this machine from the work that she does. And then it becomes part of your lifestyle that you know she's not always show ready, but she does maintain her physique because she does, she does waste that I'm like, oh my gosh, she throws these kettlebells around and does all this stuff. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, if I ever get in trouble, I'm calling you. So I do know that in terms of uh, an aging person like myself, it is really important to do the resistance training. That's what's been instrumental in my regaining the strength that I am regaining. And the fact that, you know, I'm in my 70s. And so for my physical therapist to let me know that I'm doing better than her 40 and 50 year olds and my massage therapist says better than the 30 year olds. I know it has to do with the fact that we do, um, those of us that do continue to maintain ourselves with weight training and other things. It's really a very important thing. So thank you very much for um, speaking on that because I think it's a very, very good thing to do. 
I just want to add on that you you pointed out that the um, the recovery your recovery from your surgery has probably been enhanced by the fact that you were right and that I was told the same thing that I was recovering you know more quickly mm -hmm. than perhaps somebody who wasn't uh, in physical exactly fit because I you know because I was doing some mm -hmm. of these things already exactly wonderful absolutely. Great. What say you, brother Alan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was like in the beginning. I said, I asked myself, like, what do I have to contribute? Like, what's my role here? And um, and I think it's becoming clearer. Like, as I'm listening to us talk, we're talking um, uh, about physiological things. We're talking about the nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. um, and I think my contribution, I guess, to the conversation, I want it to be. Um, like, why? Why would we do that? Why would we do that? Like, why are we mm. doing this? And, right. uh, and it can be any reason. There's no bad reason to be fit, I don't think, unless you do it to excess. Um, like, I remember I, I chuckled when Renita was talking about women being afraid of bulking up. Like, when I remember being a 13-year-old boy and wanting to be a football player and putting all the work I could put into bulking up and couldn't do it. <laughs> So I don't think that anybody's got to worry about going to the gym and, and all of a sudden blowing up in the muscles. Like, <laughs> as hard as people work to do that, you know? But anyway, um, I, I'm into quote unquote fitness because when we talk about weight training or resistance training, there is very few places in my life where I can go into an endeavor and say, right this minute, I'm going to give this everything I got everything I got right now. I work hard at work, but how often do I walk out of work saying, I left it all there on the table, you know? Um, how often do I engage in any endeavor where I wake up one morning, go in the mirror to brush my teeth and go, my body is different. Like, look at this, you know what I mean? It is closer to how I feel inside. I'm starting to look how I want to feel, you know? So I'm, I'm all about the, um, that connection. You know, we can, we can help people in terms of giving them techniques and, and, uh, and ways to engage in fitness, but that internal thing that makes you want to do it, you know what I mean? Like you gotta supply that. Like we can tell you our experiences and why we do it, but it, it, it's a holistic thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that internal motivation. Um, yeah. And I, I, I agree with you, Alan. Um, you know, when it when you when you look at the fitness, that's one component of my life. But it I, I believe that staying fit has allowed me to, uh, which is what, you know, the, the Foxifier, the Fox <laughs> The Foxifier, you know, talked about at the beginning is I think how it allows us to be engaged, um, you know, fully engaged in life, even mm -hmm. as we age, right? And so I know that, you know, the energy that I get from, you know, being physically fit allows me to, you know, be really engaged in my business, which I'm taking up to another level right now in my 60s, right? And so I wrote a book, you know, uh, that I published on my 60th birthday. So so, the, so these things that are, you know that that uh, I'm doing now as I age, I, I feel like you know I'm better. I, I'm you know I know more. Uh, I care less about what people think, and I'm physically able to do the things that I want to do. So that's how I connect the fitness as to why I do it is so that I can continue to offer you know to the world you know some of the things that I have learned in in my sixty plus years on this earth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely wonderful. I'm kind and of the joy and the joy. Yes. I, I played a tennis point with somebody not too long ago, and it was unusual for people at our caliber of play. But the ball went back and forth 30 times. And finally, one of us won the point. And when it ended, we looked at each other and just fell down on the ground and laughed for five <laughs> minutes. Like, where else do you get to do that? Yes. You know, it was just joy. So I'm suggesting. Um, like, I, I don't want a, a fitness routine that I got to do. You know what I mean? I want a fitness routine that I want to do. You know, that brings me joy. Mm -hmm. 
I have Absolutely. just one thing I wanted to mention when you're th uh, speaking of your mental um, aspect in this, um, in terms of the fitness, but also just in maintaining your brain, because of course, Alzheimer's and all of that is kind of a scary thing out there in the back. <laughs> Um, and one thing that I do with my fitness that helps my brain is that I try something new. So I'm a dancer and right now I'm learning bachata and um, a few other things that aren't in, you know, what I normally do. So I do think that what we do with our fitness life um, does definitely benefit our brains because, you know, if you challenge yourself, if you're always challenging yourself and not getting into a routine, the same routine then that really does help with the mind and uh, feeling comfortable does make you more confident. And then that makes you more able to accomplish other things. Wonderful. I, I want to stay there on mindset, right? Let's mm -hmm. discuss more of the role of the mindset in a healthy lifestyle. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with Alan this time mm -hmm. because you kind of bought it up and I want to go. Yeah. There. And it's even deeper than a mindset. It's a spirit set. Mm. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's a spirit set. There's a, a, a saying that I like, um, that ritual makes the mundane become sacred. I'm gonna say that again. Ritual <laughs> makes the mundane become sacred. And I guess an example of it is like when, you know how we all see in Showtime at the Apollo and they come out on the stage <laughs> and they, there's some little tree of life or something there. And before every performer comes out, they rub it and then they go perform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, just rubbing that thing one time is just a single solitary act that doesn't have a whole lot of meaning. Meaning, right? You know right, what I mean. Right, right. But if I decide I'm gonna wake up um, tomorrow morning and and stretch on the floor for a half an hour, you know what I mean? Like my rolling my mat out, my sitting still for a second and then starting it. Now, what has become, what started as a mundane routine is now a ritual. Mm. It's a ritual. It, it is imbued with some meaning. You know what I mean? I was yeah. laughing. I was telling somebody yesterday, I started this thing now where when I, every time I go into the grocery store to go grocery shopping, when I put my hands on the cart, I say like a little gratitude prayer. And now that's like this beautiful thing for me. So, you know, in terms mm. of it, a fitness routine, like I find it useful to create little rituals. And if I do them enough days in a row, they become sacred. You know what I mean? They become little mm -hmm. prayers. And that changed my mindset, which changed my spirit set. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Like I ain't trying to work. <laughs> <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> yeah, I, I got enough work, you know? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now, Ida B, how about you? A little more about the, the, what do you have to say about the whole, the issue of mindset and fitness? Well, for, for <laughs> me, at my age, which isn't that bad, but the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is express gratitude that I woke up on the right side of the grass. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's really important that, you know, I appreciate every single day. And now I do because um, when I was younger, I didn't think about off into the future because there it was just endless. Well, now I, I really know the future is not endless and I do get to enjoy every single day. So my mind has to be where my feet are. And yes, I really appreciate what um, Alan said because when I was doing Pilates consistently, it did become very sacred. Um, right now I'm very interested in making um, meditation and yoga uh, and it's already sacred. So my um, accepting it and um, in that way is changing how I feel about doing it. It really does have more meaning. It is very important that we are feeding our spirit and not just our bodies. Mm -hmm. Because when you're young, yeah, you want to have all the muscles and the nice shape and all of that. But mm -hmm. as you get older, um, you want to be able to give more and do more for those that are around you, especially your grandchildren and great-grandchildren and even your kids still at that point and mm -hmm. or your students if you don't have kids or your plants whatever it's that you do want to um have within you a spirit of giving and that is very important part of the development because when you sit still long enough or do something like tai chi or 
you know, play tennis or stretch, especially stretching. Um, you, your mind does go into a place where I think you're uh, with the Zen waves. And then mm. that does help your brain grow in a very positive way and more, and, mm. and again, in a giving way. So I really appreciate um, Alan's activism. Um, I try and be active in terms of working with our people experiencing homelessness here. Mm. And, and yeah, your brain gets wider um, if you take things to a spiritual place instead of a selfish place. Mm -hmm. so, right. right. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you with regard to um, two things. Um, you talk about the exercise as spiritual place as a way to connect to present, to presence, you know, mm -hmm. to ground yourself and center yourself in the present moment. Um, I, so I appreciate both of that. I one, one of the things I wanted to add also is though this growth mindset. Uh, a lot of times as we get older, we kind of sometimes get in this idea that, you know, we know everything there, there is to know and, mm -hmm. and we, we're just, we're set, you know, it's like we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're set and stagnant. And so I think when you have a growth mindset that you can always, there's always more to know, mm -hmm. always more to learn, mm -hmm. always more to experience, then you're open to other experiences like, you know, learning a new, uh, uh, lear learning a, a new dance, uh, like uh, Dr. Um, Banchoko mentioned, or, you know, taking, uh, you know, doing, doing so just doing something new and different, mm -hmm. either physically, that's something that excites you, mentally something that it, uh, that you know brings you to a spiritual place i mean i think that's all important so that's that growth mindset that there's you know there's always more that you can bring into your life i think that's important yeah you know they say you didn't stop dancing because you got old you got old because you stopped dancing there you go <laughs> There you go, Alan. My 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 part of that is I say I keep moving so I can keep moving. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Wonderful. These are wonderful things. <laughs> wonderful. And I just love how uh, all of you really uh, see that exercise as a as a sacred act or as a spiritual act is where it begins as far as as making it a habit, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's just beautiful, just, just beautiful. And I'm definitely going to be using that with uh, my clients when it comes to resistance, right? <laughs> that the growth piece and being a good mentor for the senior clients that I serve, uh, who many have generational uh, mental blockages mm -hmm. that help Absolutely. health and change. So, but I enjoy it. It's the most rewarding work I've ever done in a, in a what am I now, a 50 year career or something like that, <laughs> Started mm -hmm. working in my teens. But the most rewarding work I've ever done is fitness with seniors. So, uh, so thank you for that. You've made me, I think, a better trainer. Um, so, what do what outside of the 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 the, the, the whole mental uh, yeah looking at looking at the mental and spiritual piece? Um, what else would you like to add as far as maintaining the fitness levels, right, for seniors? Because that's what I run into is um, is is First of all, I'm challenged to not want to push them any further than they can go. It's mm -hmm. not about me. It's not about me being bored as a trainer or anything. But also, <clears throat> I want to ensure that they're maintaining their levels, right? And I know that uh, it's not the same as encouraging a young man or a young woman to grow. Right? So what, what's your experience as far as maintaining your level? Right? What do you, what do, you do? How do you measure that? Is it too vague? Um, I'm going to start with IDB. You seem the stillest in this picture, in this frame. Okay. Um, the thing okay. about maintaining is that mm -hmm. maybe you don't do what you did when you were younger. So maybe mm -hmm. now what you're doing is walking. Maybe now what you're doing is riding your bike. Ah. Um, you know, there are different things. Um, you know, you remember Debbie Ingram and she does the Pilates thing. Well, before I was working, I, I mean, I've worked with her, but before I worked with her in Pittsburgh a zillion years ago, um, I worked with seniors and fitness and we did armchair aerobics, you know, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of things that you can continue to do even with challenges. And that's what people, I would encourage them to, okay, mm -hmm. so you can't run a 10 second, you know, mile, whatever, that, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever it is that they're running. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are things you can do and to always find something you're interested in doing. But if you've got physical challenges, accommodate them. 
it's you're not competing with somebody else this is for you and and what you you know <laughs> so i really think tailoring uh to where where you are is really important and as you said not pushing them to do what you want them to do but mm -hmm. for them to not only um take what you're giving them but then applying it themselves they need to um synthesize something else to figure out what the things are that they like to do and um add that add that in to what you're already teaching them so for me that um kind of will keep you um growing in your fitness um road you know mm -hmm. as time is. goes by and you aren't going to get bored <laughs> I don't know. Uh, black elders are particularly entertaining. I doubt I'll get it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> a but little more really, time goes a long way. <laughs> For everybody. Yes, it, it really I, does because it brings back those memories and then their, yeah, their remember. cells remember it and then they start moving like they did in those days. I, I got stories. They still remember yeah, the I got stories of a hip that couldn't move, but I said, let's do the four corners and that hip, that hip started moving. <laughs> 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 you know, muscle memory is an amazing thing. It's amazing. Okay. You're, it looks like you're frozen, but we're hearing you. So I just released into it. Um, but, um, you know, so we check, please check your, uh, your connection. Okay. Me? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. It, it sounds beautiful. I wanted to see you move and know why you were talking. <laughs> I selected the wrong person to do that because I thought you were being still because you were really listening, but you were still because, you know, you were frozen. So you okay. want to check that. Um, so I'm going to open the floor on the same topic regarding, you know, sustaining the, the sustaining fitness levels. Um, somebody take the floor. I don't mind. Sure. I will. Uh, I agree uh, with the, what's already been said is, and that is uh, finding the things that you can do. I mean, I definitely have had to slow down with, I stopped running uh, years ago um, because of knees, right? So mm -hmm. I had to, as a part of the military, uh, when I was in the Air Force, I had to run, but uh, mm. But post uh, military, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to really do that anymore. So, but I walk, right? I, I walk a lot. Uh, I'm I live in downtown Chicago, and so I'm uh, I we've got this beautiful lake front, and I take advantage of it uh, during the summer, even in even in the winter, you know, just with with the right clothing on, right? So I right. I, I walk a lot. Uh, I walk everywhere, Every, you know, everywhere I need to go, I walk, you know, to the grocery store, to, you know, where, wherever I'm going, I'm usually walking. Now, I've deliberately chosen to live where I can walk, and I know that's not necessarily feasible for, you know, for everybody, but, you know, walking is one of those things that is available to pretty much everybody, and, uh, and it's something that you can do, or even in the privacy of your own home during this, you know, the, the, during the pandemic when so many of us are quarantined and unable to get out, you know, you can walk, and, you know, there's so many fitness apps now that uh, are offering, you know, during this, this time have offered free classes, you know, so there's, mm -hmm. there's ways to access fitness without having to pay a lot, uh, you know, assuming you have access to internet. And again, I know not everybody does have that, but uh, but yeah, there's ways to do it. But I think the big thing is just continuing to do something. As I said earlier, keep moving so you can keep moving. It's when we sit down because, you know, I, I heard somebody, somebody said this one time, it was about some 80 year old golfers, right? My dad is in his eighties, he, go he golfs. And it was like, you know, why are you still doing that? Well. He enjoys golfing, you know, I mean, he, he loves to golf and it keeps him active. So why would, why would you just stop doing something that you love because you've reached this, this number, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest thing is continue to doing, to do what you love, or even if you have to modify <clears throat> to keep moving uh, and that just allows you to keep doing what you love. Wonderful. So Alan, do you want to, um, and what Renita just said about her dad reminded me there's this, this world-renowned, I think he's a cellist, named Pablo Casals, and he's 93 years old, and he's been world-renowned for 80 of those years, and he still practices two hours every day, and a reporter asked him, Mr. Casals, like you've played every major concert in the world, you're known as the greatest there has ever been, why do you still practice two hours a day? He said, I think I'm making progress. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you talk about um, maintaining, 
in order to maintain, there's got to be a benchmark. There's got to mm -hmm. be a, a quantitative mark so you know whether you're maintaining or not. Right. And I think the question becomes, what is that and who sets that? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. me jumping down right now and doing 20 push-ups is not a big deal and it doesn't require a great deal of effort from me. But somebody mm -hmm. who hasn't gotten out of a chair in 30 years, the same 20 push-ups is a major ordeal. So the question is from what perspective are we maintaining or not maintaining and who gets to determine that? So I think the key to that will probably be like, let me set some really clear goals as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. and, and let, you know, the question is, is I, I may only be able to do five push-ups, but am I doing them with joy? Am I doing them um, to the best of my ability? And if I am, then, then five push-ups, then I won. I won. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to look at the chart that says somebody my age, weight and height should be able to do eight. I gave it the best shot I had and I left mm -hmm. it all there. So I think what will be helpful is um, in the beginning of our endeavor to become fit that we, we, we really get clear what, what we're doing, why we want to do it, and what and how will we determine whether we are progressing. Beautiful. Absolutely. I love it. So <clears throat> um, those are great stories too that you all gave, especially about your father and then you, again, those adages, those, they really are things that I think uh, we're really gathering the most uh, information from, right? The most, uh, I think, heartfelt information from that our audience is getting. So keep that up, right? <laughs> so now, uh, many of you have experienced fitness trainers. Um, and so I wanna discuss pretty much um, in depth if we can, what makes a good fitness trainer for people who are aging, for mature, you know, uh, people? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start with Renita. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, having, having been a fitness trainer and having actually done a little bit of studying uh, as I uh, worked on a personal training certification around what it takes to uh, be um, an instructor for aging people, I think the biggest thing is meeting that client where they are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that um, uh, that I would get from my uh, group fitness instructors, because I would be teaching, you know, people of all different fitness levels, but I would often, um, you know, accommodate some of the older members in the class by doing things that I knew that they could do. If I, if I had clients in the group that I knew couldn't, you know, get down on your knees or something, I would avoid those kind of exercises or help them modify so that they, you know, could do it. And I think the biggest thing is, is being um, understanding what's needed as, as you know, you age. One of the things I learned is that, you know, as you age, you need to do more things with your back, right? I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense, right? So, so you know, um, so, but, but, you know, as, and I know you, you, you do this. Um, so, um, but, but yeah, being, being mindful of where they are, um, that they want to do something, but they're, they're sometimes afraid that there are things that they can't do. And so go gently, gently encouraging them to push themselves, but at the same time, understanding, you know, the joints, maybe, maybe, maybe hurting, maybe screaming, you know, the knees, you know, the, the hips, you know, the, the, the shoulders, all of those things that, you know, may uh, make them afraid of pushing themselves. So just being cognizant of, of where they are. And they, and they, and then a lot of times, you know, it's, it's that, I think it's also that need to be in community um, for mm -hmm. older people. It's, you know, uh, um, and of course, I, you know, now we're in a pandemic and we're not doing as much group fitness perhaps and in, in wherever you are, you know, here in Chicago, we just opened studios back up. But, um, but for a lot of older people, that is also community that they, you know, are, are looking for that community to be a part of. And so just, again, meeting them where they are and then welcoming them, encouraging them, whatever it is that they uh, are able to do that, you know, you encourage them to do that. Beautiful, beautiful. So um, 
Alan, I'd like to speak with you on the same subject, a good fitness trainer, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to, to think about the fitness trainers you've had in sports. Like what made a really good one, right? What did they do? Yeah, give us kind of a narrative. Yeah, um, it, it's interesting because I think there's a, um, there's a gender difference mm -hmm. in, in the approach of fitness trainers. You know, I, I came up, you know, I played football in college and I played a bunch of team sports and they're really testosterone driven. <laughs> mm. so, I, so I really am enjoying now that this discussion that I am in the company of, of, of women, um, because I think one of the things that men do is they come into a, a, a trainer client relationship in a, in a hierarchical way. Like I'm the expert and you're not really that smart or good at this and I'm here to help and I'm gonna make you better. You know what I mean? Where I think women um, and, and, and men who are somewhat in tune um, have much less of that hierarchical thing. Like, mm -hmm. like, like they wanna know how can I serve you? How can I help you? As mm -hmm. opposed to mansplaining about an exercise. You know what I mean? Like how can I... <laughs> You know what I mean? I how, can, how can I tell you to do this? You know what I mean? So I think, um, and this is the case because I'm an educator and I worked for a lot of years with, with students with autism. Um, I, I, I realized that there's a reason, and my father used to say this, son, God gave you two ears and one mouth. And there's a reason for that. You know, are you listening to them? Because they're going to tell you what they need if you are listening, you know? So I think that the ability to be less hierarchical uh, and, and, and patriarchal with a client, and am I listening to them or am I trying to impart all my wonderful wisdom? Okay, wonderful. Wonderful insight, I love it. How about you, IDB? You seem to have gone through a lot of different types of fitness you know, uh, styles over the years, as well as dance. So what makes a, a, a good, a good, good, good instructor in those things. What do they do that's different? Uh oh, Thank you. so true. The encouragement mm. and acknowledgement are really important. Mm. Um, I, with elderly folks, it's really great when at first they can't get up off the floor by themselves, and then after a few classes, now they can actually get up. Which was my thing was to teach them if they fall, how do you get up? If you're home alone and you fall, how are you going to get up? You know, mm. on your own. And so through the the classes, able to see that progression from people not being able to do that to being able to get from the floor to a chair you know, all on their own. Mm -hmm. We did wall push-ups and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, encouraging them and acknowledging the progression. And then what Alan said is not being the sage on the stage, you know, <laughs> is really important too. Um, right. When I was working with obese women, obese and sedentary women, um, and at that point I was still that little young 30 year old or whatever, but I realized a leg lift was aerobic exercise for them, you know, and I realized <laughs> that that's where it's at, you know. Uh, it is for me too. I got some pains <laughs> over here. <laughs> I still got the you know, I, It was just funny because that was back in the days, you know, with the Reebok high tops and all. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and so I right. was like prancing around like, um, you know, a, a young girl will do. And then I realized these women were struggling. So yes, you have to know where they are, meet them where they are mm -hmm. and accommodate. And as soon as I was able to do that, then they were able to learn and progress. So yes, it's really important to tune in to your um, clients and realize what they are able to do and then encourage them when you see their growth, acknowledge it. Yeah. Uh, that, that was great. Absolutely great. Uh, hopefully uh, many trainers can get something out of that, particularly as they pivot to uh, serve more seniors. Um, yeah. Um, so um, <clears throat> what are we looking at with time? We're looking at about 15 minutes. We're doing good, guys. So I'd like to talk <clears throat> about some of the, um, the, the <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I would like to talk about more technology. <laughs> I'm trying to move yeah, so it's kind of it, it, we're going out into the new normal. And what are some of the ways in which you have begun to use technology and, and, and as part of your fitness 
uh, your own personal fitness planning and your own personal fitness engagement? And how do you think this is going to impact seniors moving forward? Or even if you want to talk about barriers you see because of technology moving forward as it comes, as it applies to accessing fitness, all right? And let's mm-hmm. dig deep, all right? I mean, there's a lot, a lot to learn here for us, for our generation, right? And it's mm-hmm. still a lot for fitness trainers to have an uh, opportunity to understand as they serve us, okay? All right, I'm gonna start with uh, Renita with that one, please. Yeah, um, you know, so I haven't um, bought any of the, you know, um, things at Peloton or you know, any of those things, uh, but, but I have uh, used the, um, my phone computer to take fitness classes remotely. Um, I don't know, I, I, I think we do, I think it is going to affect, have some long uh, term effects on the fitness industry. And I do uh, wonder if we will lose, um, because of the technology, if we will lose that, um, that, you know, that touch that, you know, that sometimes you need that, you know, that, that face-to-face, that, that in-person. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it is, uh, it's definitely affecting, you know, the ability of some of these studios to, or these fitness centers to, to remain open, to remain a clientele, to keep a clientele. It's made it more accessible in some ways, you know, if you have access to the internet, if you have access to fitness um, classes online, I mean, I think it has made it accessible uh, in many ways. And again, like I said, during the pandemic, I have used it pretty extensively to maintain my level of fitness. And uh, so, you know, it, you know, I, I mean, I could do, I could teach myself a class, but you know, it's it's a lot more fun when there's other people involved, right? <laughs> so, so, uh, right. So I, so I have used it. I think in some ways it, 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 it's made it more accessible. But again, I just, I wonder what we lose by not having that one-on-one, uh, especially in a class format. If you're one of those people that you go out and do your own thing, you know, in the gym and you, you know, you're not, you know, you're not working out with a trainer, but even then you usually have your little crew that you see in the gym. You're there, there at the same time you are, you know, you say, Hey to everybody, they encourage you, that kind of thing. So I do wonder that we lose a little bit of that. Uh, And I'm not sure if that's where you were going with the technology. That's the only thing I could think of is to how we've been accessing uh, Mm -hmm. fitness, especially during the pandemic. You know, we've had to use technology uh, just to, you know, to help us maintain the level of fitness. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Perfect. Thank you. And that wasn't the clearest question in the world. Okay. (laughs) So, yeah, I I admit that because it has so many pieces, right? Right. Um, Because especially when it comes to (laughs) delivering the service to seniors. Mm -hmm. Uh, So um, I'd like to uh, continue with that, but I want to talk about uh, technology uh, tools to reach to reach uh, uh, seniors that maybe have barriers because of their socioeconomics or their geography who could really, really use this, right? Uh, Alan, would you, would you like to talk on that for us with us? Yeah, that's the first thing that came to mind. It was like, um, I think technology in any aspect that we talk about it is, um, although it has its own characteristics, it's a tool. And it's only going to be as good as whoever's using it. It's only going to be a good thing or a bad thing relative to the intention of whoever turns that thing on. So I think the the thing that jumps out at me in terms of the benefits of technology is its ability to create a sense of community all across the world. Um, My daughter is uh, on my Facebook feed every day and she does Peloton. And it's a thing where I see people from, you know, there might be somebody from from uh, Yugoslavia congratulating her on a ride she just took, you know? So I think it has the old, a, a great power to form community where that might not have been different, might not have been possible before. Oh, so um, new community, I like that. Yeah, but in mm-hmm. terms of technology, like my, my engaging in fitness stuff is, for me personally anyway, is a refuge away from technology. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, like I go, probably the longest stretch of the day where I don't touch my phone or computer is when I'm on the court. 
you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, but I get the benefits of it. I, it's only going to be as good or bad as whoever's using it. Absolutely. Okay. So, Ade, you want to add anything to that? Well, my thoughts are kind of all over the place because it's not just the seniors. <laughs> but um, I really like this new one. They have the mirror. That one looks a little interesting to me because it looks like it's got a variety of things and it does have community as well. I went to work out um, in the fitness room with <coughs> my great-grandson's uh, mom. And I was on the, I think it was on the bike. And it has a course and there are other bikers coming past you and going through you. And then there's somebody talking. And so it's not like it's a virtual community. You know what I mean? Um, not real people, but it is some sort of community. So it isn't just you treading, you know, riding away on this bicycle and watching your heart rate and how far you've gone. There's a little bit more to it than that. Um, the other thing I thought about was, uh, I can't think of her name, but she does um, movement classes for all levels of people. And it, uh, so, you know, she's got something for seniors and something for people that are dancers and, but it just really has to do with just moving your body, walking in different ways around the room and, uh, taking it up different levels, skipping, mm -hmm. hopping, doing dance moves, whatever. Um, I thought about people's ability to have connectivity as being an issue uh, and a deterrent. And then, mm -hmm. like I said, it's all over the place. Because then the other thing I thought about was those kids that are always on computers, but then they came up with that um, dance one where it was a competition where you had to get up and move and follow the, uh, the uh, flashing lights or something. And it made them dance. <laughs> and this is kind of old. And I'd say, mm -hmm. I'm th talking about something that's probably happened in about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. However, it got those kids that were stuck in front of those computers getting fat up and moving. And I thought that was like a really good thing. So um, for seniors, I think if they can find um, upcycle, soul cycle, whatever, or um, some other way to engage with some activity that is provided by the technology, it's going to be additive. But again, it, the, everybody's not going to have um, the ability to access it. So right. you know, yeah, that's the I think challenge. it's got its place. And um, mm -hmm. especially as we've been saying with the <laughs> pandemic and you don't want to be out doing too much with too many people, it's been a boom. And, you know, but, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's just a piece of the puzzle. Right, exactly. Yeah, and I can, I also think, um, think about mobile apps uh, and, so, and those types of things, which I find myself using more in the pandemic, you know, um, I use them, I've downloaded a lot more and use a lot more. Uh, just for the variety, just to be learning new things or when I, mm -hmm. you know, uh, consider a client, a new client or, you know, uh, getting things for a current client, I find I'm using mobile apps more. And um, I'm, I'm wondering if that's going to be a trend moving forward. But, um, but you guys, I, I like the discussion on the actual exercise equipment, these new technology exercise equipment is really, really great insight. So <clears throat> we're about to close. Uh, and I thank you all so very much. But um, before that, I really want to know um, what tips or advice you'd like to give the Silver Foxes on, um, on feeling and looking and, and being engaged in this life like you are. Okay, um, let's start with Adebiyi Banjo. Well, I'm going to bite on Renita and say drink half your body weight in ounces of water at least every day. I see this fake, um, no, this real fireplace behind you where I am. It's going to be 75 <laughs> degrees today. So I'm like looking at that and just laughing. Yeah, Jennifer is in the same situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so drinking water is really important. Um, keeping moving. Almost mm -hmm. everything that we've uh, been saying, find something new mm -hmm. that's in your um, range of ability but that's different for your body. Ch try ch uh, challenge some other muscle groups. Um, mm -hmm. Don't get in a rut with what you're doing. Um, eat more fresh fruit. Give yourself a meatless Monday, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, just re and also just really as you mature, don't avoid the doctor. I mean, you know, I'm really a holistic kind of person, but I have found out some things that could have gone critical 
because I was keeping up with my annual checkups. So it's really important that uh, we do still stay to the top. And um, yeah, I'm skeptical of doctor's advice because you know they're practicing medicine, but <laughs> I don't know if they ever <laughs> stop practicing and start actually doing it. But anyway, um, that's the thing, to, right? Yeah, you, you do want to, if the doctor tells you something, then you, there are other resources that you can check into in terms of naturalistic ways to address mm -hmm. aging issues. So right. yeah, those kind of things. Stay regular, fiber. <laughs> <laughs> the age old adage, yes indeed. Yeah, yes, but yes. the gut health is, is health. It oh, is. And, also, and the last piece is, and probably most importantly, is the mental aspect. You do want to be where your feet are, and you want to be grateful. All right. Thank you. Uh, Alan, would you like to share, even if it's rehashing in, in new ways, what was said there? Um, God damn. What popped into my head was um, more motivational than anything. And it was this saying, and I just, I've heard it before, but I just saw it recently, and it says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. Today. Yeah. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, because it's too easy to, and I'm finding myself becoming of that age. Well, like thinking what has happened, everything prior to today somehow is cast in stone and it's too late to do something different when there's no need to do something different or that's just the way I am. You know what? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. And Renita, what's some yes. of the I well, can't I, wait I, to hear yours. I've already said my keep moving so you can keep moving. Uh, <laughs> Just say it always, again. Say it. Always keep moving so you can keep moving. Uh, you know, something around what Alan just said is start now, right? So, you know, when you know better, do better, right? So if you, if you, whatever you didn't know before, you know, let's not waste a whole lot of time on what we didn't do. Let's do, let's start now. Uh, maintain that growth mindset. You can always learn more. I mean, the, the story you gave about this cellist. Oh my God, you know, yes, we, we continue if we have a growth mm -hmm. mindset, we can continue to get better. Right. So maybe yeah. there's things that we perhaps can't do physically, but, you know, we got we know some things, you know, we yeah. have some experiences <laughs> and we know some things. Right. And, Wonderful. So, and 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 we are here. I mean, I think, you know, the 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 price or the cost or the what we owe for being here on this earth is to share what we know. Uh, and though I certainly try to do that and I know that people here uh, are trying to do that. So, um, yeah. That's, okay. That's about it for me. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, this we're coming to the close of our panel. Sexy Foxy Fit. <laughs> that's us. We didn't talk a lot about the sexy part. <laughs> you did more than you know, brother. You did. Oh. Yeah, Alan, Alan, keep, keep moving so you can keep moving. <laughs> keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> I truly appreciate all of you. You have all uh, impacted me in some way in my life. And Renita, I just met and she actually turned me the Foxifier and I have run with it. And I think it's actually taken all that I do and believe the way I believe in uh, fitness and the way I handle it and the way I'm going to be moving forward to carve this space for black seniors in the fitness industry, that it takes something like that. It takes a you know, a, a title like that. So I want to- Foxifier. <laughs> Foxifier. So I am now the Foxifier. Uh, and uh, Alan, you know, what he does in, in, in communities, uh, particularly marginalized communities, he has a history of, of uh, transforming lives and being this incredible mentor uh, and teacher in these communities. And so thank you so much. I, I think, um, you know, you can't be thankful enough for the work you do and bringing on the Drums Over Guns program. Um, yeah. That was really wonderful. Uh, and our day, we've already shared a little bit about our history. <laughs> you know, it's over, it's over 30 years because my child is 30 years old. And I know. I knew you before that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew me before that, right? <clears throat> so um, just uh, want to thank you all for having been in my life and being on part of this journey with me and then sharing something on this journey with me. Um, mm -hmm. 
in this in this really uh, unique way. Um, <clears throat> I want to share that uh, we're going to be on YouTube tonight in the new because I have a YouTube channel, and so we can upload the recording there. And everything's going to be there on the Facebook Watch Party at six p.m. Okay, so. Okay. Um, thank you all so, so very much. I actually have to do my thank yous for all of the people who have helped um, our, uh, our fitness team, our fitness fair team, which is uh, Jessica McCready, Emmeline, uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua Sarah, and Mariama Gregory, my daughter. <laughs> all right. Yes. <clears throat> and then I have to let you know that this comes uh, with the, from the support of Healthier Neighbors in uh, West Palm Beach, as well as Community Partners of South Florida. So thank you guys. Uh, they uh, gave me my first foot up and believed in me and have continued to throughout this process. Uh, so <clears throat> thank you all so much. Uh, I want you to have uh, joy in your day, uh, have joy in all your days. And uh, I just want you to know I can't thank you enough. I hope you watch tonight because I think I got some of the baddest elders on the planet <laughs> right. in this process. So I hope you guys can watch and catch this tonight. Okay? Great Peace and be well, everyone. Thank you. Nice oh, to meet everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm glad you all could meet. Be well. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.